Applying to med school is really f***ing scary. And one big reason is there's no transparency. When's the last time you saw a full, real, actual medical school application? No one ever really talks about how they're doing. This year, I'm grateful we've worked directly with 39 students and they've earned 152 interviews. We're not even halfway done with the cycle. So in this video, I'll break down what exactly is working for our students. Let's start with section number one, the numbers. As of November 1st, our 39 students have a total of 152 interviews. Our mean is 4.15 interviews and our median is 3.0 interviews. 89.7% of students have at least one interview. That's 35 out of 39. 38.5% or 15 out of 39 have a top 20 interview. And those include invitations to places like Cornell, Harvard, Mount Sinai, Hopkins, NYU, Stanford, UCLA, Yale, and Vanderbilt. This is my favorite stat. 48.7% or 19 out of 39 of our students have already at least one acceptance. I'm most excited by that because before the holidays, these pre-meds get to go back home with a white coat in hand, an acceptance letter in hand, a home no matter how the rest of the cycle goes. And those are just some great programs, including the University of Washington, University of Colorado, Georgetown, Tufts, and UC Davis. To be clear, I'm unbelievably excited about the numbers, but truthfully, I don't really care. We don't really care about keeping those numbers so high. And that's because every pre-meds admission cycle have unique goals. And so it makes sense that we tailor our targets to that student's unique goals. That's what we take most seriously. But still, looking at the numbers overall, I genuinely can't help but be and feel so happy that so many of our students and their families lives have changed. And everything I've learned about medical school applications came from studying actual applications. That's how I learned what stands out. In the next section, we're going to splice the data to learn what types of pre-meds are doing really well and why they're doing well. But before that, if you're looking to learn about medical school admissions too, we have eight full AMCAS applications that got into some of the best programs in the country. And to date, over 20,200 pre-meds are part of our community. To join, click the application database link in our description box below now. Section number two, diving deeper into the numbers. When we look at on-time applicants, our stats become even more staggering. And on time, we define as submitting the primary within the first cohort of verification. Traditionally, that means about the first one or two weeks of the AMCAS opening. On time also means that you submit your secondaries for your top schools within two weeks weeks, with the gold standard truly being that they're pre-written and submitted within the first three days of receiving them. For those on-time pre-meds, our average jumped to about five plus interviews. That's at least a 25% boost just by doing your work early and on time. Now, another powerful piece of data is that 89.7% of our students have at least one interview. That's 35 out of our 39. That's important because of the Thanksgiving rule, popularized nearly a decade ago by SDN member Lizzie M, who suggested and observed that if you didn't get an interview by Thanksgiving, that was a good signal that your cycle may not go as well as you'd like, specifically that you may not get a single acceptance and that this was the time to to think about reapplying. And while it may feel early and certainly is early for a lot of people, it's a great time to pause and game plan for the next cycle just so that you actually have time, the couple of months to make real changes to your application so that if you will apply that next cycle, you have some substantial changes to remark on. Now, if you've heard of the Thanksgiving rule, you may have also heard of something called the three to one rule, the interview to acceptance conversion rate. For our students, that percentage is actually 22.8 four percent, which when I saw the number, I was horrified. In essence, the three to one rule is an observation that most pre-meds who comfortably have at least three interviews will get at least one acceptance. Of course, there's a ton of variation on what schools you get interviews to. Some schools have high interview to acceptance conversion rates. And also there's a ton of variation on how well you do personally on the interview. Some people are just fantastic interviewers and others look fantastic on paper. But yet the observation I find to be generally true, I find that it's very rare to have someone with three plus interviews and not a single acceptance. So personally, for all of our pre-meds, our goal is to at least get them to that floor of three interviews and bonus points if they get those three interviews before the holidays, because hopefully that means they get an acceptance before all the relatives 
can ask how medical school admissions is going. Now, I wanna revisit that scary number, 22.84%. It seems low, and our goal for our students is really 50%, that every two interviews they earn an acceptance. So what is going on? I expect this number to go up throughout this cycle because it's, again, only November 1st. And at this time in the cycle, it's actually pretty rare for students to receive an acceptance. It's pretty rare for medical schools to commit and send an acceptance on their behalf before the holiday season. So actually, I turned this on its head and I think this is a really encouraging number. At the end of the cycle, I hope those interview to acceptance rates go up to about 50%, suggesting that we're really preparing our students well for their interviews. And it's this attention to detail, I believe, that separates pre-meds who get into medical school from those who don't. And if you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, you don't wanna make any mistakes. Our pre-med catalyst students who apply on time have a 100% acceptance rate. That's more than double the national average. And our results are because we work so closely with our students. In fact, we can only take on four students per month until we're full for the cycle. So if you're interested, take a look at our application cycle advising link down below. Section number three, what stands out right now? After diving deep into the cohort of our best performing students, I have three main takeaways. Number one is that excellence translates. For example, we have a student who has 13 interviews by November 1st. And in her application, she talks about being a student in China and being surrounded by the beauty ideals of things like an A4 waist. An A4 waist, for those of us who don't know, is a thin waist the size of A4 paper. She created a book sharing 30 intimate interviews with people struggling with eating disorders. That book is now featured in three separate art exhibits, and she developed this work, progressed on it, and now created an organization that hosts workshops and safe places where over 200 people have come to share their struggles with eating disorders. The takeaway here is that excellence, no matter the domain, translates. The skills of excellence, perseverance, self-awareness, resourcefulness, the foundational skills, those are all traits that admissions committees search for. They know they can teach you medicine. They've been doing that for hundreds of years, but they know that these underlying foundational traits, these soft abstract skills, those are the things that only life can teach you. And so they search for those already pre-existing in their students, and they know they can layer on top of that medical knowledge. That's a sound recipe for a fantastic doctor. Takeaway number two is, will med school be easy for you? One of our students had a difficult upbringing where for a couple of years, his father was incarcerated and that threw the family dynamics and the family finances out of the window. And he talks about how he had to make ends meet, including selling his prized Pokemon collection, and learning to flip things in garage sales just to put food on the table. And while he doesn't explicitly say it, there's this underlying presumption that if he could survive that season of life at a younger age than he is now, you can imagine that he can survive and flourish in medical school. And of course, this takeaway doesn't apply to everyone. And I'm not telling you to go out and make your life on super hard mode just so you have some adversity to talk about. But that does beg the question, if you ask yourself, will med school be easy for you? And your answer is yes. Tell the story and explain why. The third takeaway here is Korean barbecue in Mexico City. Adcoms have read thousands of applications by now. It's almost like when you're typing on your phone and it auto completes your sentence when they read certain applications and see certain extra curriculars, there's this auto complete assumption. For example, maybe you say that being a waiter taught you customer service or that studying basic science taught you the scientific method. These are the standard cliche takeaways. But when you get to conclusions that are paradoxical or not expected, things that break that autocorrect pattern, that is when you get the attention of your adcom reviewer. For example, if I told you that I just came back from Mexico City last week and my favorite meal was actually the Korean barbecue, it's pretty odd and not expected. Many of our successful students, including one who has more than 10 interviews at this stage, have shared their version of Korean barbecue in Mexico City. One student has 13 interviews, including to Harvard and Hopkins, and he writes about his experiences as an EMT. Now, what do you think that experience is about? Maybe it's an immersion intubation? Maybe delivering a baby in the field? Well. He actually writes that most people think that being an EMT is all about adrenaline and urgent rescues, but I found it's just as much about quiet moments and empathy. This is him actually talking about responding to a student call where that student was experiencing suicidal ideation. There weren't any bright lights, there weren't any loud sirens, but instead there was him kneeling at eye level, gently asking questions, listening, and creating space for that student. And it takes a lot of nuance, maturity, and I think forethought to really come to a conclusion that most people don't expect. 
I think the beauty of that is you get to share what an experience truly is like, not what people imagine it's like. For a reader to learn something more about something they thought they understood, that transforms your relationship with your adcom reader, and that makes you forever memorable. Now, if you love this video, you'll love this one here about the 10 hard truths I wish I knew when I started my pre-med journey 10 years ago. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.